you're, you've already lost church members, in my opinion. You've already lost. Even if you win the case and they now have to do secret ballots, how are they going to enforce that? How is the state going to do this? They're going to write a constitution for a church? Seriously? They're going to write a constitution for a church. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. My name is Richard, and we've got another episode of Contra Thoughts. This time, it's going to be about suing people. Coming up next. Coffee, coffee with a K. Um, I like my South American coffees. This is good. I think this is Honduras. Anyway, all right. So, David Platt's church sued. It's probably why you clicked on this video. Um, my goal with this channel, if you've not watched before, and if you have, thanks. I appreciate it. Um, it's it's fun. And I like to talk about things when a lot of other people aren't. I don't have some sort of hierarchy of people telling me what to do or anything else other than the Lord. And so it's, um, I believe what the Spirit brings in front of me, what convicts me, he, how he convicts me, and so on. So I don't always talk about <clears throat> um, junk in the church and trash that's going on in certain churches and whatnot, but... <sighs> At the end of the day, um, it still needs to be talked about. And so David Platt's church, uh, you know, big pastor. He used to be the uh, president of the SBC's International Mission Board. He was a very prominent pastor in a lot of circles for preaching. He was at T4G, Together for the Gospel. Um, was in church, at a church in Birmingham, Alabama, big church. And then he went to be the president. Now he's in Virginia just outside of DC. And a few days ago, I mean, they've had, had they've had a uh, craziness for, I don't know, six months or more at the church, uh, with different things and members meetings and chaos. I've got a video up here. If you want to check that out, uh, talking about that a little bit longer, it's, it's, I think about an hour. Uh, but anyway, it's something that just shows, just, just madness, just madness. And again, this is a public uh, thing, right? It's out in the open. I'm not digging and trying to find things that are private and and all the rest. And oftentimes, I think sometimes people will get a little uneasy about certain things. You know, well, do we really need to name names? Do we really need to point this stuff out? Do we really need to bring the scripture to bear? Yeah, you don't always. No, you don't always need to, I don't think. But a lot of times you should. I mean, Hymenaeus and Alexander, Paul talks about uh, he talks about Demas, who was with them, and then in Second Timothy, I believe it is, he is in love with the present world, and he leaves and go has gone to Thessalonica, and people are called out. I mean, look at Elijah, and the prophets of Baal, and 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 all the rest. There's 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 needs and reasons for stuff like this. So a few days ago, an article from Protestia.com, judge rules in favor of church members suing David Platt and his church for secret ballot voting. Rights. This is when I read this. I mean, you're like, oh my goodness. First of all, this is just ridiculous. And by the way, y'all who aren't Baptists, be thankful for Baptists because that's why we have the government. Predominantly, why we have in the United States is a representative government uh, that is a democracy, but it's with representatives uh, of the people, and that's why we have the votes and this and that, and it's secret and all the rest, because a lot of the early founders. Um, John Witherspoon was one of their influences. Uh, also, Elijah Craig, the guy who made bourbon, by the way, uh, was a Baptist preacher, made some bourbon. Um, so, yeah, it's always fun. But that's why we have the way w the ballots we have. Could you imagine having to put your name and your address and your picture or something like that on your ballot when you vote for president? I mean, how few, even less of the 75 million people who voted for Donald Trump in 2020 would have voted for Donald Trump? And how many more people of the 81 million? There would have been so many more than 81 million, right? Because there was 81 million votes that voted for the most popular president of uh, all time. Right? Several months ago, several conservative members of the 13,000-member multi-state church 
where past, uh, Pastor David Platt holds sway, kind of weird, he's just the pastor, I don't know why it says holds sway, um, filed a request to the Fairfax County in order to get an injunction, blah, 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 a lot of wordy language right here. Second paragraph, this unusual move was prompted by the fact that entire McLean Bible history elections were conducted by secret ballot. Well, yeah, duh, right? You're not raising your hand saying, I want to vote for this person. Now, for some stuff, you might. But over the summer, they stopped, and this is where it is. They stopped, and again, check out that video. It's much more detailed. I'm not going to be an hour here. They stopped um, some men being voted in as elders. Now, this is the same place that has a more melanated man um, saying he wanted to torch white people. Now, let's be fair, pretty sure he just meant like roast as in make fun of and, and get after and everything else. I don't think he means actually kill. There were some videos about that over the summer uh, or maybe even late spring. And I don't think I don't think that's what he meant. I really don't. I think it's just it's just street language lingo to say I want to bug you, bother you. Nevertheless, um, David Platt has also said a number of things and that has just been just dumb. He's just dumb. And preaching multiple sermons way out of context, let justice roll on like a river, that was one. Uh, he preached a horrible sermon in 2018, um, T4G, that really kind of crystallized that moment and showed where the trajectory is going. Now, we're looking at three years, almost four years ago now. But the multi-site church, first of all, isn't really great. I, I don't think at all. Uh, plus a 13,000 member church. It's crazy. Conservative members of the church. Eh, okay. I might I might differ a little bit with some others in my same vein. Um, but it goes on, talks about Fairchild and Yoder, their lawyers, the plaintiffs, blah, blah, blah. Fairfax Circuit Court gave open gave an opening round of victory to the plaintiffs suing McLean Bible Church for illegal uh, denial of voting rights. Now, again, remember, McLean, David Platt, uh, who was the president of the IMB. Something happened with David Platt. I'm convinced of that. I don't know what. I'm not here to speculate. But something happened with David Platt to make him switch. I mean, he was the president for five or six years. When I was at uh, seminary, I heard him preach very passionate. He's always talking, you know, talking about the the nations and lost and what about people going to hell and all this stuff. And, and it's, oh, he's so impassioned. And a lot of people like it. A lot of young guys like it. They want to emulate him. But in a sermon or two or three, I can't remember, he says they're not a Southern Baptist church. We're not affiliated with Southern Baptist Convention. It's like, first of all, that's stupid. <laughs> uh, why would you want to distance yourself unless all of a sudden the Southern Baptist started, you know, enslaving people or something? Uh, or, you know, I don't know. There's just ridiculousness but they are they are a, a simple 20 second search online can easily tell you they are and they're affiliated with that defendants include the church Pl uh, platt and six other members of the board of elders plaintiffs also alleged that losing a june vote this is when i covered that maybe in july when i did the video uh of their chosen candidates for elder defendants ended the decades-long practice of secret ballots so the defendants there are the church the plaintiffs are those suing the church members. Now, I don't know the law, and I'm not going to pull it up even if I had it. But in Virginia, where this is, just metro D.C. area, remember D.C. is not actually a state, right? They're just right outside. They, uh, I don't know why I said that. <laughs> you know D.C. is not a state. Um, you can sue or something the church and the church can sue and, and, and within the, the, the state courts. Now, Virginia has a long, 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 long history, right? A very long history compared to many other states. And of course, one of the first 13 colonies and everything else. Big legacy, big legacy. But, and let's not forget, we used to have Anglican and and different denominations being state churches, right? In America, prior to the writing of the Declaration of Independence and the Bill of Rights and so on. So it's not new uh, to have a state-run church and state-sponsored whatever. Now, I'm very, very, very thankful, especially as a Baptist, why they don't um, have state-sponsored churches, why we don't have state-sponsored churches. And you are too, because you don't want to be forcing your babies to be 
baptized or having your believers, if you believe in infant baptism, to wait, right? You don't want to be forcing people to think that the Eucharist, the bread and the wine or the grape juice is actually Jesus's body and blood, or it's not Jesus's body and blood or some other thing like something different. Not to mention, you don't want to force people to go to church when they don't believe. I don't want people to be forced to go to church. I'd like you to come to my church. I'm a pastor, small pa- uh, pastor of a small Baptist church in Kentucky here. And if somebody comes, great. And we've had visitors, great. Um, hopefully you come back, you know. But I don't want you to, I'm not forcing you to come. If you don't want to come to church, which is the gathered body of believers, it's not some outreach ministry. It's not some mission. It's the gathered body of believers. So let's all be thankful for a moment. Just take a pause and thank the Lord seriously that we don't have a state church. I think that's why England, why Germany, why Scandinavia, they've just, they're just so, they're just sterilized and so hyper secular because the church continues to lower its standard as opposed to trying to be a beacon of the truth. But here we go with McLean Bible Church and many other churches like it who are trying to be like the world, trying to be pseudo-state sponsored at least acting like as such. I mean, David Platt a year ago mentioned in another uh, article a statement saying that, you know, if other people are voting Democratic, uh, you should leave this church, basically. If you can't handle that, sorry. If you want somebody to support baby murder, support all sorts of sexual rights, support giving free money to people, support people not working, support this, support that, you know, because Dems are all about that, quote unquote, then you need to leave this church. Now, he's talking to 13,000 people. A little ridiculous. Sure, surely there are some Democrats that still drink the Kool-Aid, especially in the D.C. area. But the bottom line is, the church plaintiffs, or the plaintiffs here are the church members. And they're suing because they don't want to have public ballots. That's really the gist of this whole article, and I'll link it in the description. That's the whole gist. Yeah, I'm I'm glad. But the elders, the defendants in the case, said, no, we're going to switch this after the June when we lost some social justice warrior type elders. Now, you listen to these guys, and that's what's so tricky with with the critical theory stuff and just the woke ideology that's, that's been seeping into the church for the last, I don't know, five years or so, but it's really become a prevalent in the last two, is that they always say, and I did a video on um, James Merritt, and he's a kind of behind the scenes SBC guy, but he's been around a long time. He has a homosexual son, same sex attracted. He's a elder at a open, open church that's universal, um, doesn't really believe anything, universalist, meaning like everybody gets saved. And so, that's not really orthodox now, is it? No, not at all. But James Merritt is talked about in other articles, Baptist Press. Oh, you know, by all accounts, he's conservative and orthodox or evangelical and orthodox in this. And all these names, they used to mean something because people would people co-opted Protestant. They co-opted Christian. So then we'd have to say, well, I'm a, I'm a conservative Christian or I, I'm a fundamentalist. You know, this was 100 years ago. Um and then it's like, well, no, I'm an evangelical Christian because I'm about the evangel, which is just gospel. Evangelism, that's what it means. You're pro- proclaiming the gospel. And now it's, I mean, an evangelical is somebody that goes to church one or two times a month. It's just a political tool to categorize people. <laughs> I mean, again, I swear I'm going to write something. I shouldn't swear. Uh, I promise I'll write something about uh, not being an evangelical. I'm no longer an evangelical because this, it means nothing. It means nothing. What your actions are. That's the thing. I'm drinking black coffee. If I told you that I didn't drink like black coffee or I loved black coffee and I always drank frappuccinos, well then you'd say, well, you don't really like black coffee. You might say you do. You might like the idea of it, but you don't actually like black coffee. Which reminds me, a word from our sponsors, start, no, I'm just kidding. I don't have any sponsors, but if you want me to sponsor something, let me know. If Starbucks is watching this, no, I don't really like Starbucks. <laughs> Uh, just kidding. Anyway, so McLean Bible Church. I'll wrap up with this. They sued, but the question is, should they have done that? Now, I totally agree, and I'm on the side, I think, more so with the members of the church than the defendants, the church leaders, David Platt. 
his pastor staff and so on. Well, let me read this last article and then we'll go to scripture. Defendants have repeatedly violated NBC's constitution and trampled the rights of their membership and have honest have an honest vote to choose their leaders. We are pleased that the court saw through the transparent efforts of the defendants to use Christianized language to cloak their most unchristian effort to prevent a free and fair vote under the NBC constitution. That's later in the article. Pretty much the last second to last article, uh, paragraph. Okay. Now, I'm not there. I've never been in that big of a church. Biggest church I've ever been in is a thousand people. And uh, being in the Southern Baptist, it wasn't an SBC church. The SBC church I was at at seminary in Louisville was about seven, eight hundred. So decent size, you know, bigger than most. 13,000, though. That's crazy. You're going to get a lot of different opinions, I would imagine. But should. It happened. Should they have done this? That's the question. Well, I'll be controversial. Create a controversy, as our our Brit friends say. No, I don't think they should have. I don't think they should have. Because supposedly the leaders of the church were um, telling lies. Oh, we're not part of the SBC, which they're not. They are. So that's a lie, unless he's meaning something else. Uh, but also having members affirm the elders and then they go to the main campus where Platt is the pastor and like it's only 50%, 60% as opposed to like a 75 or 80% affirmation of these guys because they're spreading lies. And David Platt, and I showed this uh, in my video, I believe, showed that these people were uh, spreading lies and he calls them out and this and that and everything. And it's like, okay, you shouldn't be doing that either. Like, it's just... I don't know. I mean, again, I'm not in that position. The pastor, the church I pastor is not anywhere close to this size. And I'll never probably be part of a church uh, that's this large. So I don't fully know. But this is why we have the scripture. This is why we must pray for discernment. Why we must lean into the Holy Spirit and know him better. 1 Corinthians 6. And this is why I don't think they should have ultimately the members. <laughs> because yes, it was wrong. But... David Platt's the pastor. He's not always going to be the pastor. Uh, are they going woke? Yeah, probably they are. They're trying to push an agenda. They're trying to have, just like the Matt Chandlers and others of the world, you know, give me this guy with that looks a certain way, but he's not really as qualified as this guy. But I want to be seen as having this. Now, I don't know what I don't know if that's not a token. I don't know what is. Right? Based on content of character and merit, that's what the fancy word meritocracy is. You're, you're earning it, not a uh, egalitarian, everybody's the same. 1 Corinthians 6, this is why they shouldn't have sued, I don't believe. And correct me if, you're, if I'm wrong. Again, I might go out on a limb here, fill in some, drop a comment, let me know. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts. 1 Corinthians 6, 1. When one of you has a grievance against another, does he dare to go to law before the unrighteous instead of the saints? Ah, uh, strike one. Not good. Or do you not know that the saints will judge the world? That's including there. Verse 1, that's verse 2. And if the world is to be judged by you, are you to are you incompetent to try trivial cases? Now, maybe this isn't a trivial case. Maybe not. That might, might, might be where they find the argument. Because I'm sure these people, these lawyers, maybe believing lawyers, Christian lawyers... They, they, I'm sure, know this case uh, or this uh, set of verses from 1 Corinthians. So if you have such cases, why do you lay them before those who have no standing in the church? Ugh. But apparently in Virginia, you can sue your church. Not every place. I don't know why you'd want to sue your church ultimately on a regular basis, but people do. But it never goes well, ladies and gentlemen, right? Like it never goes well. Like what's, what's their motive here, right? These people, five people, 10 people, however many people sign a petition, I don't know. And they bring this and they say, hey, lawyers, sue these people, sue this church, sue my church. Well, those people aren't going to go back to that church. Everybody knows, I would imagine, or a lot of people know that it's them suing. And now what? 
now you can't do the thing that you wanted to do. You wanted to save this church. I mean, you're looking for future generations. You're looking for your grandchildren, maybe. You're, uh, you're just trying to do it out of spite. You're trying to do it because of consistency or because it's just the right thing to do. Maybe, 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 maybe. But I don't, I don't know. Again, it's a sticky situation going on. I say this to your shame. Can it be that there is no one among you wise enough to settle the dispute among brothers, but brother goes to law against brother and before unbelievers? To have lawsuits and all with one another is already a defeat for you. That's exactly my point. Paul hits it on the head because he's writing uh, under the spirit. It's already defeat. They've already lost, right? They might think the court might settle. You need to do this and you need to force this. But as soon as you welcome the state, you really want to welcome the state into your church? Seriously? Seriously. You really want to welcome the state into your church? I don't. <laughs> like, I mean, just, again, this is what we saw with the 70s and the 80s, the, the conservative resurgence within the SBC and then likewise in the broader culture, electing Ronald Reagan, um, the moral majority, Jerry Falwell, that whole thing. Like, hey, we're locking arms with the state. Now, again, there's certain um, end, end times views and whatnot that would say they would lean more towards yes than no. Uh, God's law. God. I mean, I get it. I, I don't want to have a secular state. I think the state should be informed by um, the Bible from Scripture, from the church in general. But it's not the other way around. And that's where a lot of people, oh, separation of church and state. Well, it's not in the Constitution, blah, blah, blah. It's not there. It was just a letter written by Jefferson to a group of Baptists, believe it or not, uh, Danbury Baptists, in like 1802, something like that. And basically assuring them that the state would not interfere. Because Baptists were very much, I mean, they started Rhode Island because there were being, they were being persecuted in other states. Uh, that's why we have Providence, Rhode Island's First Baptist Church of America there in Providence, Rhode Island. Um, and yeah, it also brought along a lot of other things and allowed other things because of freedom of conscience, freedom of speech, and so on. All these things are Baptist values, by the way. That's another reason why I'm Baptist. So if you're something else, that's okay. But just be thankful for your Baptist brothers and sisters. To have lawsuits at all with one another is already a defeat. Why not suffer wrong? Why not rather be defrauded? But you yourselves wrong and defraud even your own brothers. Ugh. Ugh. Guys, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to disagree. I'm going to have to say, no, you shouldn't be suing your church. Not only, not only is it unwise, at best it's unwise to say, hey, super secular, ridiculous government, come on in and let's, you know, let's deal with our church issues here. We're not Roman Catholic, right? We're not, um, what's the other one? Roman Catholic light. Episcopalian. But we're not we're not even Presbyterian. They're Baptists, for lack of a better word. Now, they're supposedly not so the Baptist. Okay, David Platt. Um <laughs> uh, it's just I get it, I get it. And your your church leaders are jerking you around. They're pulling you back and forth, and you're on this, and you're just all over the place. I get it. But you you've already lost church members, in my opinion. You've already lost. Even if you win the case and they now have to do secret ballots, how are they going to enforce that? How is the state going to do this? They're going to write a constitution for a church? Seriously? They're going to write a constitution for a church. Uh, no, 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 <laughs> no, no, thank you. No, thank you at all. Uh, I don't want that. I mean, are you like, again, think through this guys. Think through this. It's 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 just it's just unwise, and even still, even if it's fine in the in the Constitution, it's all right and the good and the Virginia state, right? The state, the courts write this. The unbelieving courts say, hey, you know, it's fine. Do this, do this. And the elders are like, oh, okay, yeah, I guess we will. We oh, sorry, we messed up. They know what they're doing. They're not going to admit fault, most likely. And if they do admit fault, you think the plaintiffs, the people who are bringing the suit, are going to <laughs> they're not going to be able to come back to the church. Like you're, you're blacklisted. You're, you've already ousted yourself. You've church disciplined yourself as it were. I, I, I don't know. 
I'm, I'll just, uh, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of other passages that we could talk about. Um, anyway, I'm going to wrap up. Um, hope you found this helpful. I really do. Uh, maybe a little humorous and a little sad all at the same time. Uh, but my goal, contramundum, there is against the world. And I'm helping you be against the world. I want you to be against the world. I want you to see the stories, to read the articles, to see a tweet, to read the scripture, to, but a scripture that's, you know, taken out of context by somebody else and be against that. But then for that person, that's the promundo there, because I and you were once in the world. We were once bumping around in darkness in, in this world without Christ. But we were transferred, if you're a believer, from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light through faith in the Lord Jesus. That's it. There's nothing else. There's no works. There's no base, anything. There's not giving money or being part of this association or denomination or anything else. Strictly by faith alone in Christ alone. If you don't know Christ, turn to him. He will take you. He really will. He can wash you of all your sin, 1 John 1 tells us. Not some of your sin or most of your sin, but all of your sin. And that's what's so so amazing and goes against every other system, every other worldview says you have to do something. You have to earn your way. You have to be right. You have to be the right culture, the right color, the right this, the right that. And you might even hear this from Christians, so-called. Not so. There is neither Jew nor Greek nor slave or free, but there's all one in Christ. Men, women, everybody's one in Christ. Doesn't mean there isn't distinction, but what that means is strictly that anybody can come to the knowledge of the Lord. So if you've not bowed the knee, you can bow the knee. You can turn to him right now. You really can. You repent and believe. You, you confess. You raise the white flag and you say, I'm done. So go ahead and like and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, I really would appreciate it. I'm trying to basically just be one more voice um, that are trying to uphold the scripture truly and, and bring the people's feet to bear. Bring the church and the culture's feet to the fire and say, look, what does the text say? What does it say? And how do we apply it to our lives? That's it. I'll take care. Have a good day. And uh, we'll see you next time.